Good morning, everyone. Hi. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I, hi, my name is Marcus. Uh, Niels just had, did a great talk about uh, getting better tools to make your life better as a developer or site building. And he took part of my talk, thanks, <laughs> and uh, gave you a short introduction in what uh, automation tools can do for you, or how they can help you to build development environments. In short, Vagrant, and in my case, Chef, to build a simple machine or a host to put your Drupal stuff in there and to get it running and to do that quite yeah, as often as you want, as easy as you want, and we'll see what you can build out of it. So, there are a few people coming. A short introduction. And so, <laughs> no. Uh, my name is Markus Heuron. Uh, my handle almost everywhere is who, M-O-H-H. I do or did most of the time Drupal development, now I'm a most of the time Linux as a part-time trainer and manager. I co-founded Freistil IT. Um, we do operations for developers, in which case it's Freistilbox, which is a service for Drupal and WordPress. And the challenge you have as a developer is or when you get to Drupal development. Most of the time, these four cases, you have those really nice snowflake environments where you get your new computer, be it Windows, be it a Mac or whatever, a Linux even, and you build up, you follow a how-to you found on the net, maybe Stack Overflow in a good case, maybe some old blog from 2012, you follow, or a wiki entry of your company that didn't get um, improved over time and you build your thing and you have something running and that's good but another, a colleague of yours did that two years ago or just starts now and builds almost a different thing. You always will follow some steps some, uh, some um, yeah, like one, two, three, four, five where you follow some things you don't really understand most of the time what they actually do and manually configure your Apache or your MySQL and are happy that it's running and that's fine actually, but why do something you do actually don't understand and let don't let that do something else. In the long run you will get different versions, like you have a local locally running leading edge Apache 2.4 with PHP 5.5 and a MySQL or IAPB in the newest version and you deploy to production and there you get PHP 5.3, an Apache 2.2, and a MySQL 5.0, and it breaks. So, this sucks, basically. <coughs> That's what I am confronted with most of the day, so, or some of the day, it's not that often. And uh, for the nicest part, it you have a new developer and you want to get them on board as quickly as possible. So you want some tool. Just take this, do this step, and you're good to go. So this challenge is accepted. And what you want to do is minimize our setup time, make development as close to production as possible. You won't be able to do that if you're doing complex setups, but at least if you have your conversions right, you're quite happy, should be quite happy about that. And you want to repeat your setup as often and as uh, consistently as possible when you need it. So you don't have to um, reinstall your environment all the time. If you have to uh, restart over, it should be the same all the time. And the first tool which helps you with that is Vagrant. It's actually quite simple, useful, buddy. 
It describes itself as create and configure lightweight, reproducible, and portable development environments, which fulfills all the tasks, or most of the tasks, before. And if you install like, uh, the tools you need to, it's more, for the beginner it would be a virtual box and the Vagrant itself. You do these two commands, a Vagrant init with some box name, which is a like, kind of virtual machine prepared for you. This downloads it, does some magic stuff. You type a Vagrant up, boom, and you got your machine running. Compared to using a strange GUI where you click some stuff together and have something running, have to configure networking, uh, have to think about IPs and give up after half an hour. You try again after a few days. Um, so that's Vagrant. It's a simple wrapper around virtualization which gives you a command line tool which controls virtual machines. Simple as that. Chef is a bit more complicated, maybe. Chef is, uh, yeah, Chef wants to do configuration management. So it's uh, Ruby DSL. Ruby is not spooky stuff, it's simple. This DSL thingy says it's a own language written in Ruby, so you have a very specific configuration language to do Chef. And the main goal you want to reach with Chef and what it's doing is this magic word, Eden Potency. So it's what it simply means, do something, run on the system, and always get the same result, and only change what's needed to get there. So you don't need to run your shell script all the time, like install Apache MySQL, copy this file and do this, but only Apache is installed, great. MySQL is installed, superb, and go on. So what you reach with it is you can see your infrastructure, in this case a small vagrant box, in another case two load balancers, five web posts, two database servers, a solar server, and so on, as code. So you can program, code your infrastructure, you can use development tools to work on your infrastructure, which is not as new, as new now anymore, but 10 years ago you had, if you were uh, working on some like a setup or a, a data, uh, data center is a bit harsh, but um, like if you had to administer 20, 40 or 100 hosts, this was a full-time job with a tool like this, you can and some not too much difference in between everything. Uh, you can two persons easily administer a hundred, five hundred, a thousand servers and sleep well. Chef server, where you use it in the big scale, looks a bit like this. It has a server component where instructions what is to do are stored, where there's a little database where different stuff can be stored, and you have nodes out there which are your machines, like bare metal servers or virtual machines or cloud instances at AWS or EC2 instances. And you have your administrators where you have this nice knife tool, Chef is. Uh, takes a bit the metaphor of the cooking chef, which gets really complicated when you want to use Google. <laughs> chef Apache. <laughs> Think about it. So, <laughs> the most important words just to get you on board are uh, Chef uses cookbooks to organize uh, services. In there, there are recipes. Recipes are code. Resources are something you can use, and attributes are your variables in your code later on, which can differ. Uh, the nodes are your machines. Uh, I can look there, it's easier, better. Uh, the roles, you can group stuff, 
run this tells you what code needs to run, where, ever, and search. Search is something you can use to um, get your information out of Chef Server and apply it. So a node, it has a Chef client running on it. Needs to run there, it does the hard work. It's a sous chef, so to say. And uh, every node gets applied a run list, which it's like your mini shell script, do this, do this, do this. You are a web server, and so on. And a node gets attributes, which then are applied in the recipes and cookbooks, and uh, like your host name and everything. The cookbooks are bundles, like uh, you have a cookbook for Apache, where everything is in there, what to, how to install, how to configure, and how to manage Apache servers. The same for MySQL or PHP, and um, the same for your own cookbooks, like the one I will partly show you later for your Drupal installation. Set a recipe defines what resources Chef needs to get at your lead component state you want to have it in. And your attributes again are something like the PHP memory limit you want to have into your PHP ini. It's like a simple variable in your code as well. Your resources, again, simple examples are packages like Apache 2 again, most famous one. You have services you can control from Chef, like service cron restart you do on Ubuntu. You can do that from there. You can create files in directories, of course. You can do that from Git. You can do that from files in your cookbooks. You can use templates. And it looks like this. The first three lines installed are from a recipe that install Apache. Regardless if you're using Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, CentOS, maybe some BSDs as well, depends on how good the cookbook support each uh, platform. And the next three lines make sure that Apache is started and gets started every, every reboot or uh, the service is so configured that it always runs. That's it. Simple as that in the start. <coughs> to do it, create a directory. I have a directory command. I say I want uh, var www.root. Create this one for me is the action. I can give some uh, parameters like the owner who has to own it, the group, <coughs> the file mode, and a recursive true if like var didn't is, uh, exist before, which shouldn't be, but maybe www. It, it creates these as well. It's like even easier doing this yourself on the console where you have to do make deal, blah blah blah. CH mod, CH group, CH uh, own, and so on. It's way easier. You have to do, and you don't have to touch the console of the server. This is how you do a template. Template is more or less a file you prepare before. Put some placeholders in there, and it will, uh, which is part of your cookbook and the template. In this case, it's the apache2.conf.erb, which is a sort of Ruby syntax, but very simple. If you used PHP template before, <coughs> it's very similar. Yes. Mm, but now I'm not independent from using Ubuntu or Red Hat because this uh, right. structure is of course. Different. This is it's a very special recipe for this special Ubuntu box because Ubuntu puts uh, puts the Apache 2 conf at this special place. There are better <coughs> ways to do that. Even this is just for explanation how this stuff works. Um, if you look at the cookbook for Apache 2, you have a huge readme, or a good readme actually, not only huge, but good as well, where you can learn how to write platform-independent 
configuration, then it takes care of the rest as well. I'd like to show you how this stuff works again. It uh, creates this configuration from the template with variables that are configured in the node. And after it changes it, or when it changes it, and only if it changes this, it sends a reload notification to the Apache service. And this is run every five minutes. All the time, all the day, maybe even every, or every 30 minutes, depends <coughs> on how fast your nuclear changes roll out. Roll out. And um, if there's a change in your configuration or the template file changed, only then it applies this change. And only then Apache gets reloaded. Questions on that? You can ask any time you want. So, good. And last, and definitely not least, but because there's, I leave out a whole lot of stuff, of course, but this is the most important part. And those few steps are roles. I can find, create roles where I bundle a run list. Like, I have a web server. A web server includes the Apache, um, includes APC and some PHP configuration, and I put that in a role, and later on I just need to apply that role into, onto a node, including some default attributes. And uh, that's it. It works, hopefully. This is code what you create. It will fail because you write bugs, but you can find them and correct them. So, Vagrant is, in my opinion, the perfect tool to get into. Chef, if you want to learn it on the big scale, but it's also great to uh, to use it to create your development environment because Vagrant includes uh, its so-called provisioners, where, like Chef, in its special version, Chef Solo, which can run without a server, just it's a new local configuration. Vagrant also does uh, salt stack and Puppet and Ansible, which you can look at as well, because they are all perfect valid tools. You just should use one of them to do this stuff, and not do that by hand. And you don't write, please don't write shell scripts. So what do you, do you need to do to get this running? You install, for the start, virtual box. There are plugins for Vagrant, for LXC, or Parallels, or VMware, or whatever. But for the start, you can use the free and Ugly but free virtual box. You don't see anything of this anymore later on. And install install Vagrant, which you can get from both websites. They're both both free of charge, uh, which shouldn't be. You don't need to configure anything. So click, 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 and then you can have a command line tool called Vagrant. And for getting it a bit easier, Vagrant knows plugins, and those two Vagrant cashier and Vagrant Omnibus are the two I'm using in my example. Um, Vagrant Cashier is a caching service, so you don't have to re-download all your app or dev packages, all your games you're installing. It's like a proxy for your Vagrant machines. And Vagrant Omnibus is a little helper which installs this chef client inside. The machine, which will do the hard work later on. Um, I prepared a little setup, a vagrant configuration, and a little self written cookbook which does this in, um, sets up your simple environment. You can get it on GitHub. Just clone it, you change in the directory that it, it's. Uh, it, um, and then there's another little helper which makes chef life easier. It's called Librarian. It exists for Puppet and other tools as well. It's some a bit similar like Composer, but for these tools. And Librarian Chef gets the file in the middle 
I say please use the site community.opscope.com, which is the <laughs> company behind Chef, and it provides cookbooks for you. And I want the cookbooks at Apache 2 database PHP and MySQL. These are the cookbooks I use in mine. So I do library chef install, it downloads the stuff and they are here. And I can use them. Like a library, software library model, basically. I create a role. This looks like this. I give it a name, I give it a description, and I tell it, please load the recipe apt. I use this to do the app get update update automatically at a chef client run so you get current packages or you even can get your packages because maybe your information in the box you first uh, loaded is updated. Please load my Drupal recipe and then some more recipes inside my Drupal cookbook. I'm sorry. So this is what is configured outside my cookbook. In Vagrant, I have to tell, in the Vagrant file, uh, use the provisional chef solo, look at these paths for cookbooks, look at the roles path for your roles, and add to this node the role Drupal. <coughs> so this is just what I do, and then I do a Vagrant up. Lots of stuff scrolls by, and you have a virtual machine configured and running with an Apache, with MySQL, with databases configured on it, with uh, credentials on it, with uh, APC configured even, <laughs> and some Drupal specific uh, PHP extension you might need, like GD or MySQL or anything else. And you can use it. You just go to. Oh, let me see if that works. What I want to do. Probably won't. Is it here? I go to localhost. I have one folder configured. Yes, stupid. The Drupal. Ah, okay. It's not installed. I have a settings PHP prepared, and Drupal 8 is not, in this case, off. Uh, it doesn't look like it works, and then you can go on and install your Drupal 8. Mm -hmm. If you can see what's on there. And so on. I don't want to install Drupal right now, that's not really part of this. So. <coughs> I published the speaker slides already. At the lowest link down there, I have the repository and some important links, of course, where you can get the stuff I was talking about and get the documentation for Chef and for Vagrant. And now that was really quick, 24 <coughs> minutes. First, no questions, but thank you. So this is my email address if you want to get into contact. I'm here until the afternoon. And now I have time left. And I can show you how this works. So I will start mirroring here and get to my console and can show you so much time left. I can show you how to do that from scratch. So I have something running here. I destroy that first. Oops. This is my command line tool. This is a checked out repository. You can read that, okay? In the background? Great. Um, with the Vagrant destroy, I yeah, do that. I destroy, I stop the machine, and I destroy everything that got created. This talks to VirtualBox right now and says shut down and deletes files. Sorry? Okay. Not yet, it's low as hell. <laughs> this is basically virtual box, uh, not the quickest one, and uh, okay. So this is fresh now. This is my directory here. This is the repository you, you basically get when you do the clone from GitHub. This is the chef file I was talking about. 
And let me see if the vagrant files. Oh, okay. Right, this is the con vagrant configuration file. Here I tell it, please load right, this box. The box is a prepared, as I told you, image you can download. There are plenty of prepared boxes you can load. Uh, like, and you can even build yourself so, some, of course. <coughs> this one's from HashiCorp, it's a corporation or the company behind Vagrant. It's a guys who do some other cool stuff as well. And it's a precise 64 bit, like Ubuntu 12 or 4 long term stable. Here I configured some port forwardings. So from the post uh, from the machine, from the virtual machine I want port 80 and I want to get it outside to localhost. Port 8080. Or you can do 80 there as well if you don't have running a web server. And I forward <coughs> port. 3306 to the outside, so I can do connect, can do connect to the database inside. This makes it possible to, to use some better <laughs> MySQL clients than the command line client or PHP admin. I can configure some folders that are synchronized in Vagrant, so you can access your code, your Drupal code inside the machine and there I do some new fancy stuff which is uh, rsync the document root folder into the machine so it, you don't have to load it we are the vagrant sharing feature which is really slow it's like a network share and it's not the best choice to put code onto this and I sync a folder for site's default files uh, to and let it own let it be owned by WW Data, which is a web server user, so it can write in there, which so you don't have to do a horrible uh, ch mod seven 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 inside the machine, so you don't have to get into the machine actually. This is for configuring the two plugins I was talking about. Oops, it's nothing too complicated. And this is what I showed you in the slides: the configuration of Chef Solo that runs inside. Here in this uh, Chef JSON Ruby hash, I can configure databases, data bases which are created by my computer. I create a database called Drupal, which you can access by username Drupal and rocks as a password. So, that's it. I do a vagrant up. Now I can get a coffee <laughs> and then I'm back. Uh, it will run. No, it will be faster because I've done this before. Uh, the packages, the boxes are cached on my computer already. So it will take only two or three minutes for the first time getting this thing up and running. Yes, please. Even so, you already mentioned that uh, perhaps virtual box is not uh, the fastest. Yes. Um, um, what can you yeah, uh, advise uh, which uh, hardware you should have to use this vagrant network? Um, you need some SSDs. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest choice. <laughs> That's a good idea. No, you need RAM. Uh, lots of RAM. If you want to run multiple uh, box uh, machines inside there, you can use Vagrant to set up um, whole machinery, <coughs> virtual machines. I'm just starting up one, yeah. um, and you can do as many as you like. You first. Um, say you already distributed like the boxes, and you want to update like the box to a new version of PHP. Is there like a way to notify like a new version on the other boxes, or um, like update them automatically? You normally wouldn't update your box. You download the big one, the prepared image file, to update that stuff, but update your recipes, your chef cookbooks, to do that for you later on. So everyone gets that. And then, of course, you can update that box as well. Um, 
Vagrant looks for itself if the box is updated and downloads it again and uses that one in the next steps. And uh, the cookbooks and the configuration for the cookbooks are in the Git repository, so you pull them in and you've got your changes. Is that okay? That's what I was showing before, right? Vagrant cache here. Yeah, it's a caching service yeah. explained which so you don't have to re-download all your packages again like this. You can't get around Omnibus, I guess. I'm actually not quite sure anymore if I need Omnibus at all, so but uh, we can wait for that. We can use that for questions. It's perfect. So yeah. Uh, you're in the back first, please. Uh, the glass. Uh, this is one addition to the software version, so you mentioned it's always a problem with a different version, so uh, is it right that you uh, define the exact versions you need in the uh, configuration? Um, yes, you can. The, I, was, I have to remember that I should repeat your questions, I'm sorry. Um, so, yes, you can define versions applied in. Uh, it's going to use what I, uh, I will show you, I, I have time, but hey, now I need to watch, now you need to remind me. <laughs> I'm still half an hour left. Um, I did some trick to convince Ubuntu Precise to install PHP 5.4 so I can run to plate. And there I define that stuff and there I can, I can actually use the PHP uh, cookbook to install PHP from source and compile everything for you. And I can give a very specific version. I can tell it, please use APC 3.1.9 or an older version. I'll show you later on. So, um, please. Um, Vagrant seems to be a great way to have the um, same environment for different developers. Yes. Um, but you use and configure Vagrant on command line. Um, how about using Vagrant on a Windows box to um, have a similar environment? Windows has a command line as well. It works on Windows from the command line. And do you recommend to use it on Windows? I don't recommend using Windows. On <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, if, you, if you have to use all. Used to Windows and like it, of course, it's okay. No, I don't want to get you off that platform. That but it works more or less the same there as well. Um, you should organize yourself with the questions now. Um, it's still doing that. Uh, <coughs> Just a second, please. Uh, how do I get. Not for me. That was stupid to destroy it. <laughs> okay, the questions, you please. Would you recommend buying like a profe more professional uh, like solution like VMware for it? Or no. No, right? Because no. you said that, that, is, that is slow. Um, like the, those virtualization techniques are slow by Designing more or less because you're running a virtualized computer on your platform. This never can be really fast when you're. Um, in my opinion, uh, like if you want some advice to speed this up a lot, you do the following: you create, you take your virtual machine by choice, VMware, Parallels, or VirtualBox, install a Linux in there, and run Vagrant inside of it using Vagrant LXC. LXC are Linux containers, which isn't virtualization, but has the same effect for you as a developer. It, it's a really, really uh, thin layer on top of the kernel, which gives you sort of a virtual machine, but it's fast as hell. And if you want to go on, you can use something like uh, Docker inside of it again and inside. Ah, oh, it works. Finally. Uh, this doesn't take that long if you have a good and proper internet connection. Two, co <laughs> two coffees and two beers. Ah, we said it. Did that yeah. answer the question? You? Raise your hand. Yeah, but Docker is something a bit different, in my opinion, and it's 
nice and great, and you can do really, really cool stuff with it. Docker is, uh, it, Docker is um, not from these guys, but is something similar to Vagrant, which can pull up containers as well very quickly and very thin, but it's a bit of a different use case because you pull, normally you fire up one process inside there, like only the Apache configuration. And that's it. That's great if you can do application deployment with big style. But if you can't, of course, boot up a whole Linux kernel or stack or init, but then you have more or less the same as Vagrant. Or LXC, sorry. <laughs> no? I'm using Vagrant and Docker Inside of Vagrant, you run Docker? Yeah, Docker inside of Vagrant. Right. But you don't use Docker as a provi uh, provisioner for Vagrant. So it start Vagrant does start up instances of Docker. You can do this. You can do this. Okay, then that's pretty. It's like leading edge stuff, for like months old or weeks even. And sorry, I don't know that as well as I maybe you could. Right now it does some PHP upgrading. That's the way I told it to work. It did. Uh, do some system configuration and installs packages, basically the base system and everything I told it to. Do you, please? Uh, what are the requirements for this arch thing? That's Vagrant even now on... Uh, it's included in Vagrant, yes. I um, can show it to you. It's just, it's perfect. It's not as good as it could be. It's uh, Actually, I found out on Friday that it's horribly slow and it doesn't do, you, you can't do a vagrant rsync auto, so it watches your folder, and every time you do a save, it syncs it inside, but it's slow to detect the changes, and it, there, can, there are better solutions right now, but they are working on that, so I really love it, because before I had to integrate <coughs> some sort of deployment process, where I used some break file and SSH into the machine, you can use SSH to get in there, by the way, and uh, do some magic and so on. You uh, we experienced some performance issues with virtual box when using shared folders. So yes. Perhaps it's a good advice uh, to, um, yeah, to not use shared folders, but to connect via SFTP to deploy on your local Vagrant machine. Yes. So they, uh, like it um, said, the SYNC folder, the standard SYNC folder mechanism Vagrant provides is uh, a bad choice for um, putting your code into there, which is read by the web server. You can, I'm putting the asset files, files directly on that. Perfect choice. It's easy. But you can access it from the outside then. And uh, it's finished. My SQL was the last step. Here you can see it reloaded Apache 2 because it was applied first. And now, I'm I'm forgetting. Okay, perfect. Now I can do a vagrant provision. I changed something at my cookbook. And I this triggers a chef solo run inside the machine and <coughs> hopefully this will run a lot faster than now. This was the first setting up. And now I have this virtual box machine running in the background. And Something must be wrong inside this room. And it's not it's a three year old computer, so <laughs> it's not your usual development machine with fast SSDs and RAM. And I usually only do this for presentations on this machine. Because I it's stupid to get my Mac Mini with me. You can see what it does again. It's like the basic steps it always has to do. Read the configuration I did. And you can see the run list it applies, and it's done. So this was, it didn't have to do anything, so it was way quicker. <laughs> okay, you had a question. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm wondering whether Vigor uh, can also manage pre-existing virtual boxes somehow? Um, if you prepare them, uh, you can take images and convert them to a print format. Yeah. There's documentation for that on the website, okay. how to do that, more or less. I didn't do that before, if you, because, but I read about it. <laughs> so, 
So let's see if it worked. Uh, wait, I show you before. I have this here. So I have the www folder. I put my Drupal in there, or my WordPress even. I did that before with some other, other stuff. I have a clone of the development repository for Drupal here, which is this. It's what you get when you do git clone, git out uh, code, if you get the current development of Drupal 8. And I created a settings PHP before, because with this setup, the way I did it, um, the web server isn't allowed to write to its code. It's not allowed to ch create a settings PHP, which is good practice, or the best practice, actually. Um, this is the settings PHP I created for it, and before, to be honest, I let it create by Drupal and just copied it in there. Um, so it worked. Actually, uh, to be honest, I used this a couple of days ago to get my first steps in Drupal 8. I'm a bit late, I know, but so it might not look be perfect. But it works. And I could still install it. So I connect to localhost 8080, the forwarded port, which gets into my virtual machine. And I create this stuff. Thanks. I'm going to try again. It works. Hey, alpha versions. <laughs> but that's okay. So, you yeah, have now then running to blade. Uh, you can, like you may have seen, I was putting a Drupal 7 in here. which isn't configured, or which can't reach its database. So what I can do now, I have another application I want to use, and uh, I create another database. So now I did a change to the Vagrant configuration, that was a Vagrant file. Because of this, I have to do a Vagrant reload, which I don't want to do right now because there's no time left. But this would create another database, would create a database user for me, and so on. Mm -hmm. time? How many time do I have left? A minute? Seven? Yep. Okay. Well, this gives me some time at least. So I can show you. This is the Drupal cookbook I created. It's not that much. Um, it has an incomplete readme. <laughs> uh, this is a metadata file which says what to do. And here are some recipes. The default recipe creates some directories. Here, do some Ruby magic, which is like a, a loop, Oops. which uh, creates the following stock root logs and temp into logs. I use that to uh, put the Apache log files in. And this is how I do the MySQL configuration. That's all of it. I use the database cookbook, which helps me, with, uh, which provides me with. Uh, this command, MySQL database, do create this DB I created in the Vagrant file, and there it provides me with MySQL database user. Here I have a variable username, use this connection configuration for the server, and creates the user with its grants. That's all I have to do to create databases and Uses to access. So, please. I have one question. If I did it right, you have the match system, you uh, have the uh, virtual box, then you install the uh, small scale replica on the virtual box, and now you grab localhost uh, via port 8080, yes. and it doesn't uh, collide with your, uh, uh, let's say, Mac localhost. 
Um, this is what the ATA is used for. Only the port. Only the port, yes. It's like if you if you install like a, like a MAMP solution, which is quite quite common, uh, it configures to, to use port 80. If you don't write anything in there, it uses port 80. No. If you have multiple, if I start up another one, a clone of this, it will collide, of course. Only one instance can use one port, but I can change that. I can write <laughs> more, even more code, um, which parameterizes this and works on. Cool. I use shares. Okay. Uh, Different use cases. Um, uh, my question is: um, uh, Could it be a solution to speed up uh, when we use, um, for example, um, network files or servers? NFS. Yes. NFS, yes. That's better. Okay. But this, um, I have also experienced that this solution doesn't work on Windows. Right. Windows doesn't. Uh, what it does: Vagrant uh, starts up in an NFS. NFS is network file system. Like Windows shares, uh, and Vagrant can do that only on Unix style systems <coughs> like Mac and Linux and not Windows. Yes, please. Um, as a note on the NFS, um, this I use that, it will speed it up. Um, yes. The, the problem is with the slow shares, it's actually not a problem of virtualization as, uh, as, as is the base. Mm -hmm. um, it's the implementation of file right. sharing in VirtualBox that's really slow. Um, yes. No, actually, uh, yeah, okay, you're right. I, now I'm Windows thinking. <laughs> it's slow. The, the Windows version of VirtualBox, the file sharing is much faster. Okay. So uh, if you use NFS where it's available, yes. Windows and macOS, yes. you get decent performance. And okay. If you're So to sum it up, um, if you didn't hear it over the recording, if you're on Windows, you can use Vagrant shared folders. They are, as you say, quite okay in performance. On Uni Unix, or Linux, Mac, you use NFS. You just actually have to change one word here or get a tell it here. Mm. With some folder, I type. NFS, that's it. Maybe I some wrong syntax, but that's more or less how I changed this. And uh, but it's in my opinion and experience. We use this in production on our hosting platform. You don't want to use your PHP code onto an NFS share. It's really slow. Still, it's better than Vagrant <laughs> share on Unix, but it's not something you're going to like. This is why this R sync thing in the newest version of Vagrant is so great. But that's um, so, if you want to talk some more, I guess I will stop <laughs> now because I have reached my time limit. And thanks very much. Um, yeah, and have a great Sunday.